Spain versus Italy, Denmark versus England, Spain and Italy, two big names in England, two big nations. Italy, one of the teams that have one of the nations that has won the most World Cups. Um, Spain, one of the nations that we all know in modern times, like they've dominated pretty recently. Denmark, uh, Cinderella story from how the world, from how the Euro started with Ericsson going down, losing their first two games, you know, being mentally drained, he, hearing that Ericsson's well, punching their tickets into the round of 16 in the last game, upsetting teams, upsetting teams. Now they're in the semifinals. England, is it coming home? Southgate seems to be punching all the right numbers, all the right moves in this year's Euros. They're looking exciting. They're looking fun. They scored four goals in the round of, in the quarterfinals. What are my predictions for these games? Man, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, Denmark versus England. England is the heavy favorite. They have all the stars. They have the big names. Um, Denmark, what a story. Like, I'm so happy for... uh, for all of Denmark, for that team, how resilient they are. Uh, it's just a beautiful story. Uh, I wish they had, I wish that never happened. You know, I wish Ericsson was still healthy playing for Denmark, rocking the Denmark jersey. But man, what a story. Spain and Italy, two two nations that looked like they were heading in the wrong direction. You know, Spain, after their golden generation, winning Euros 2008, winning the World Cup in 2010, winning Euros 2012, like unprecedented success by Spain after years and years of not winning a World Cup. They finally got it done and they looked like they were winning everything. Their players got old. Xavi left. Iniesta left. Casillas left. Ramos is not there. Um, Puyol is not there. There's so many changes in this team. And it just looked like they weren't they weren't the same Spain. And they still might not be the same Spain, but look at them. They're in the semifinals of the Euros 2020 with the chance to go to the finals. Italy missing the World Cup in 2018 and it looked like you know they weren't re- replenishing their talent um it looked like they were playing slow football their defense wasn't the same they weren't as ex- entertaining and now they're playing some of the best soccer in Europe they're one of the most entertaining teams um they put on the show in the Euros and they've been a very very uh complete team it looks like they're having a lot of fun out there so I'm just very excited for these Euro semifinals. Um, all of my predictions were wrong. I had Portugal and France making it to the to the finals. I had England getting rocked, knocked out in the round of 16. But I didn't really have I had Italy being a dark horse. I didn't have Spain going it this far. Denmark wasn't really in my radar. So I, I could I could admit that I, I I've been wrong these Euros 2020. And I know a lot of people other other people have been wrong too. But I'm just excited. I'm excited for these semifinals. Um, my prediction, I think uh, I think England, I wanted to go with the Denmark upset because it would be a beautiful story. And I like Schmeichel. He's a great keeper. And I like their team. They're, they're not like elite, elite talent, but they all play hard. And you could tell how much uh, that jersey means to them, that crest means to them. So it would be a beautiful thing. It would just be like a beautiful Cinderella story to see Denmark go into the finals of euro 2020 but i just think england is is on is on a good one right now they're on fire um they're playing good they look like like they like each other like you hear reese james on twitter saying like people are trying to like clown on him like you didn't even play why are you celebrating he's like uh it doesn't matter like this is we're all one team um you hear about connor cody being a great leader shout out to uh the wolves captain but Everything that I'm hearing from the England camp just reeks of a positive environment of Southgate, you know, building the right squad, picking the right players. Everyone seems to be, you know, tied at the hip. They're all on one string. That, so that all of that just gives me a lot of optimism for England to go all the way to the finals. And they just take they took care of Ukraine 4-0. It was an impressive, impressive display of football. Sancho finally got to play. He looked dangerous. He had the most take-ons by any of the players on the field. He looks very, very dangerous. Um, so, yeah, like Denmark, it would be beautiful. Like I've said, I would love to pick you guys, but I just can't pick, pick against England right now. They're playing beautiful soccer. Their back their back line is looks like it's impenetrable. Maguire, who I um, 
definitely had my fair share of words for over the years or not uh since i started making this podcast over the years too but since i've started making this podcast i've had my you know choice of words for mcguire that he you know he he was not worth the money he's been a disappointment but he's been rock solid for england and stones too that pairing has been great pickford he hasn't really had a chance to make a mistake but when he's been called for it, he's been solid uh kane is starting to find the back of the net sterling just is picking up steam right now that team looks solid everywhere luke shaw it, it just looks like a really really good england team they're starting to play up to their level and i have them beating denmark 2-0 in the semifinals and italy italy for spain that's the i think that's a little harder to pick italy um i believe they are the favorites they they just beat belgium they've been playing a good good soccer good football spain you know they struggled a little bit in the quarterfinals they had to go to semi. They had to go to penalties, and they beat Switzerland three one in penalties. And after it looked like they were going to lose in penalties, um, they had missed a few of the first ones, but they were able to. You know, Switzerland missed a lot. They skied one over the over the goal. So Spain squeaked out a victory in quarterfinals, which would lead me to believe that Italy is the team that's going to beat them. Well, I think it's going to be close. I don't think I think Spain has a lot of fight in them. Like this Spain team is not at is nowhere near as talented as as nice on the eyes to see play they're not they, they're still lacking a striker to score goals but they play with a lot of heart and they play with a lot of intensity and i like that from spain but italy i think italy this is this is the perfect combination of you know young and old players um their center backs are still leaving it all out on the field um so yeah i think uh i think for me italy is the team that's gonna uh, make it to the finals like they have Cellini they have Bonucci still being rock solid at the back uh, I forgot who still call them the best partnership in the world uh, I think that's I think that is correct I think Bonucci and Cellini are the best um, center back pairing in the world still Jorginho has not stepped a wrong foot in this Euros 2020 and uh, Insigne Immobile They've all been really good. I think Insigne scores a goal against Spain. I think it's going to be a tight, low-scoring affair. I think it's going to be a 1-0 victory. Italy takes out Spain tomorrow. They punch their ticket to the finals. So one more time, the hard-to-handle sports prediction for the semifinals in Euros 2020. I have Spain losing to Italy 1-0. And I have England beating Denmark 2-0. And I have an Italy versus England final. And I'll give you my prediction when that happens, if it happens. Um, but, yeah, what do you guys think? Who do you guys think is going to win in the semifinals of the World Cup? I mean, of the Euros 2020. Uh, let me know um, down below.